in case there are any biologists or future biologists in the room, the translation of that biography was when you're young, you'd have to do really cool stuff in the field, and then you'd have to spend more and more time in the office. Uh, but I am actually pretty blessed uh, working on this project, and I'm really glad to be here tonight. And so I'm going to talk to tonight's theme by discussing uh, an effort being made to bring something back into our future uh, by bringing uh, Atlantic salmon back to Lake Ontario and its rivers. This isn't going to be like a, a movie though where we can just jump in a time machine and go back 500 years or a thousand years and have a pristine uh, untouched Lake Ontario that's, that's gone, uh, gone forever. But by uh, bringing uh, Atlantic salmon back to the lake and to the rivers and keeping them here, we're going to be able to help uh, shape a future with healthy watersheds that have benefits uh, not just for this one species of fish, as awesome as it is, uh, but for all of us and for our, our natural environment. Now we weren't uh, supposed to really get into stories tonight, uh, but I do need to, to tell a story or else everything else I'm going to talk about isn't going to make any sense. Uh, so often uh, people have a bit of a, a trouble connecting the words Atlantic salmon with Lake Ontario and, and, uh, and don't really understand that uh, Atlantic salmon are just in the Atlantic Ocean or over in Europe or on the east coast of Canada um, or uh, fairly miraculously show up on grocery store shelves or on, uh, on restaurant menus. But in fact, uh, once upon a time here in Ontario, we had what was considered to be the greatest freshwater population of this species in the world. And by here, um, I mean quite literally right here, Duffins Creek is only about 500 yards, 500 meters away from us right now. And, and it was actually known as Riviere Osamon to its uh, original French pioneers uh, several, a few hundred years ago. Now, a key thing to know about Atlantic salmon, whether they're in Lake Ontario or in the ocean, but I'll just talk about Lake Ontario, is they live in two different places at different times in their life, and they migrate between those places. So they live in open water, so Lake Ontario has big salmon, and they swim around there, they feed, they grow, uh, but then they move into rivers to lay their eggs, that's where they reproduce. And uh, there's this whole uh, series of life stages that happens in those rivers, the fish hatch, uh, they grow and mature in those rivers until they get to be big enough to head up to the lake again to grow up into adults. And it's this phase that was in the rivers uh, where things went wrong for Atlantic salmon. And they didn't just disappear the way Millie Earhart disappeared or the Edmund Fitzgerald or Jimmy Hoffa. We actually know pretty well, even though it was a couple hundred years ago, what happened to them. We can describe it. It's not a mystery to us. And it was three main things that went wrong. Uh, the cold, the clean, uh, rocky rivers that they need, just like this, um, they disappeared. Uh, but again, it's not really a mystery. They got to be too warm for the fish. They got lethally warm for the young fish. And the rock at the bottom got covered up by mud as erosion happened. And not only did the uh, rivers get to be bad, in many cases they disappeared. This is uh, Tidal Creek in Toronto. We can't find this river anymore. Toronto's actually missing all of its rivers. Uh, between the west side of the Don River to the Etobicoke, they're all gone. They run under the city now. So the rivers themselves uh, uh, disappear. And the Atlantic salmon are pretty much the best jumpers in the fish world. They can jump three meters, ten feet out of a basketball net to get over waterfalls. Uh, but dams were built in these rivers, and the Atlantic salmon might jump that high, but they can't get over an eight meter tall dam or a five meter tall dam. And we built hundreds of these dams on each river, not just across the rivers. Uh, the Humber River had about 400 dams on it. The Credit River in Mississauga had about over 1,500 dams built on it. And so the fish couldn't get to where they needed to go to, to reproduce anymore. And then finally, they were being fished for for food. Uh, it wasn't a re <clears throat> recreational fishery. This was people using spears and pitchforks and nets. It was largely an unregulated uh, fishery as well. There weren't really rules in place. When there were rules in place, uh, there's no real evidence they were ever enforced. And so, uh, by the 1890s, we had uh, no Atlantic salmon left, both on our side of the lake and on New York's side of the lake. Hundreds of thousands of big fish, millions of uh, small fish, all gone down to zero in about 150 years. Uh, but people had always wanted to bring Atlantic salmon back, even when they actually were being wiped out. There were efforts to try and restore them. This is the, the first government-sponsored hatchery in, in North America that was built to try to save them down over near Newcastle. Um, and people wanted to bring them back or save them for a number of reasons. There was the moral perspective that uh, we broke it, so we bought it. And uh, it's an environmental wrong that we need to right. 
Uh, also, um, the return of Atlantic salmon would signal a healthy ecosystems, restored ecosystems, and, and healthy watersheds. They also give us an incentive to make those watersheds uh, healthy again, rather than just having an abstract idea, just the sort of Martha Stewart thing of it being a good thing. Here's a real practical reason to save these, the, and to protect these rivers. And then finally, Atlantic salmon themselves have their own, uh, they're very legendary fish, and they have their own social and uh, economic value uh, in and of themselves. But all this interest and enthusiasm for bringing Atlantic salmon back or saving them was frustrated because long after we lost in the Lake Ontario and the other Great Lakes kept getting worse up through the 1960s. We had a whole strain of invasive species come in. The worst of them was the sea lamprey. They're basically vampires on fish. They're fish themselves, but they're vampires and other fish. We lost lake trout from Lake Ontario. They were another native species. They and Atlantic salmon were the two top predators. And with that whole layer of the food web chopped off now, without any predators in the lake, we, we broke the whole ecosystem in the lake. We had die-offs of all the prey fish. They would wash up on shore. And then we had pollution going straight into the lake and into the rivers as well. And that was everything from dangerous chemicals to sewage, even tons of sawdust being poured into the, into the river. And so the, the rivers and, and the lake continued to degrade after we'd lost Atlantic salmon. But eventually things got turned around and restoration efforts began uh, on the watersheds. And after a, a long uh, period of work, 30 years or so, Atlantic salmon came back on the table again. And in 2006, a, a large scale multi partner uh, restoration effort uh, began to bring them back. And to do that, we're doing sort of four things. And I'll cover these all in detail. Um, but we're basically raising and releasing fish into the rivers. This is sort of the obvious way to bring things back. So we've gone to Nova Scotia and Quebec and Maine to get fish that are, uh, live their whole lives in hatcheries. They produce the eggs that we raise into fish that we release into the rivers. We're continuing to make their habitat better and protect the good habitat that has already been restored. This is a pretty significant component of the restoration effort. We have a large uh, research and assessment program underway, so we're finding out how the fish are doing in the modern Lake Ontario, and we're learning from them, and we're adjusting how we do things to make our restoration <coughs> efforts more successful. <coughs> and then finally, we also need to go out and uh, talk about Atlantic salmon. Uh, we not only literally need to reintroduce the fish into the river, but we also need to reintroduce them to people. People have forgotten they used to be here or have come to Canada since they were gone and don't know how important uh, this, this fish was to Ontario's natural history. And so that's what we're doing. And, uh, and this is, a, again, it's a large partnership of over 40 organizations. Uh, but uh, despite there being three levels of government and stakeholders and corporations involved in this, uh, we're not enough. Um, we need, if we're going to bring them back and if we're going to keep them here, it needs to be more than us. And, and so, uh, to, uh, if, if it, we can make this uh, become more than us, we can achieve this future of having sustainable, healthy watersheds with multiple benefits that are also buffered against future effects from things like climate change and invasive species that we're going to face. So from the very beginning, uh, we've sort of built this program to be a gateway to make communities uh, care about their watersheds and move from caring to being engaged and restoring and protecting the watersheds and then becoming future stewards are willing to invest in these watersheds. And to achieve that, we've, uh, uh, to create these community of stewards, we've always looked to make uh, the Atlantic Salmon program a public effort, a community effort, to make uh, Atlantic Salmon uh, personal for people. So when we release these fish, we make them public events. People can come out and get into the water and release fish if they want. If they don't want to do that, they can stand on the shore and uh, see the fish, meet the fish, see what the habitat looks like. We get our students out to help clean the rivers, get the garbage out from in or beside the rivers. We have a lot of volunteers come out and plant trees, and we do that to shade the rivers again, stabilize the stream banks. There's a lot of habitat work that we get our volunteers to, uh, to help us with. And then our most uh, popular project uh, in the program and out in our communities is our more than 100 uh, classroom hatcheries. There's actually one in this school here with uh, Mr. Simmons. And uh, so here we have students raising fish for us. They get to go out and release the fish into our river. So here it's uh, Duffins Creek. Uh, but more than just uh, the fish the students add, they're also uh, learning about the salmon. They're becoming ambassadors for us, spreading the word, talking to their families and peers. 
uh, become a future steward, stewards. We often have uh, find that our students who've been in the classroom hatchery program are doing their own environmental programs, their own cleanups out in the uh, uh, out in the, the neighborhood and neighboring parks and down back at the river. And so, with that, with that uh, support, what we're heading towards and leading to is getting our stock fish to come back into the rivers, get them. Uh, here, get them building nests, laying eggs, and so we can see um, more and more of these. So this is a wild Atlantic salmon. This is the one we put in the river. It was born in the river. It's parents for fish we put in. Uh, we need to see more of these. We need to see them growing up in the river, out in the lake, coming back, producing future generations of wild Atlantic salmon that are adapted to this uh, modern Lake Ontario. And, uh, and with that, encouraging the continuing uh, also protection and also the care about the environment. And so that, uh, I think, wrap up. Thank you.